Welcome back to Maya 2018 Basics. Today we're going to show you how to add multiple nonlinear deformers to one object and all the things that go along with that as well. Okay, so first thing we want to do is go into deform, deform menu, nonlinear. Let's tear that off. Let's add a twist. And what I'm going to do is just go right here into the attribute editor. I could always hit T and I got my blue guys here. Okay, I got these little blue guys here that I can use as a manipulator, so that's always there. You see it here. Now, in order to use is use the manipulator or to change the attributes in channel or attribute, you got to hit Q to get out of there, and then you can get back into here and start manipulating. All right, just thought I'd show you, recap it, so that we are learning through repetition. So let's um, change the low bound. Where are you, low bound? Let's change the low bound. Let's put a twist right there in the middle. Okay. And then we'll um, start to twist. Let's start to twist. There we go. All right. Not perfect. Maybe we should add a few more sub subdivisions in here. So I'm going to go into my poly cylinder. And let's just add some more subdivisions okay we'll just max it out for these purposes all right so that we have more resolution and we're not breaking things all right so there's our first deformation let's go ahead and add a uh, bend we'll do a bend go right there bend curvature well let's just curve it a little bit here and then let's go ahead and add a uh, a flare okay we got a high bound low bound i'm going to use it in here Flare. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my T. So let's hit T. This shows up. We're going to go high bound here. It just depends. Some of these deformers are a lot easier to use with the T, and some are easier to use, like with the sign. It's easier for me, at least, to use uh, attribute or channel box. Okay, and then we're just going to manipulate these a little bit. Yeah, no big deal. Again, just a demonstration to see multiple deformations on one object. So you can do it. It's great. Okay, so are we done? If we're done, do we delete everything here? Yeah, let's just delete everything here and we're done, right? Oh, no, we don't do that. So we can't delete everything here. But what we can do if we want to start moving it, we can't move it this way either because look. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so let's get out of that. We have to delete history. So that's this little icon here. Or you can go into edit, delete all by type history or delete by type history and then there's even one that's non-deformer history that that it'll delete as well so there's a lot of different options this will delete your deformer history okay so going into that we select this we can delete it now we can move this guy around but look what happens it disappeared in the output in the outliner and it will have disappeared in this input connections as well so let's just go back and we're still here. We still got everything that we need. We're not moving it, but let's see what happens when we change the order of operations. We go into this. This is called inputs, inputs to the selected object. This is outputs from the selected object. We're going to go in here, go to all out inputs rather, and we can change node states, which is nice, non-destructively. Let's say, uh, you know, I've got all these deformers in here. But I want to see what it's like without the bend. Okay, so now we see. So you can isolate different things non-destructively non and see what the object looks like. You can, that's a really nice option there, node state. Just like you can middle mouse click this and move these down and organize them that way, okay, you're only changing the organization in the outliner. You can do that here as well. This is going to change the order of operations okay so you'll see it it's going to change the the shape also keep in mind though that the order of operations here was we twisted then we bent then we flared for this it goes from bottom to top see we made the cylinder we tweaked it we twisted bended and then flared this is the tweak i did earlier before i started the video all right but let's say if we want to take this flare we middle mouse Bring it all the way down. Let's say we wanted to flare it first. As you can see, it changes the 
structure or the the um, shape of the object. All right. So sometimes that can be a good thing. Sometimes not so much. So twist. That's twist, flare, bend. So it looks a little bit different. It's almost like the flare didn't even matter, right? But if we wanted to do that and go into flare, we could do that. T and like start changing things that way if we like this better, right? So this would be a, and a good example of where changing the order of operations maybe made a more desirable uh, object that you didn't anticipate. So always good to go in here and, and be aware of your input operations for sure. But let's go back to the original. So we twisted, we bent, and we flared. So we need twist over let's twist. We need to bend here, middle mouse down here. Okay, so now we've got our original object, but it's not original because, you know, we, we, we tweaked it a little bit. All right, so now we've got this. Actually, it looks pretty good. We got a lot of subdivisions in there. Okay, so just again, just a, a quick uh, recap here. You want to go into the inputs to the selected object if you, and then all inputs if you want to start messing around and changing the order of operations. Also, if you want to non-destructively isolate the deformations. This is going to also come in handy as we move forward and look at hypergraphs with the way that nodes are uh, related to one another in a visual way. So we'll, we'll talk about the hypergraph editors, hypergraph hierarchy, hypergraph connections, uh, the relationships between the different nodes if we need to manipulate them. Okay? And then once we're done, we want to delete our history. And that's going to delete our history and allow us to move our object around so it doesn't go through any more deformations. We can always hit Control Z if we want to get back to our deformations. But if you go too deep into your construction, uh, you may not be able to get them back. Well, can I add a band then later? Well, you can, but it's not recommended. So if I went in here and just uh, deleted history and then uh, went back into deform nonlinear and let's say I wanted to bend this guy again it's gonna be a different kind of bending it's gonna be a different situation okay than it was before so just keep that in mind if you're gonna deform know what you're doing and then when you hit delete construction history you know let that be the end of it and move on with your life okay otherwise you're, you're not going to get the desired shape that you, you probably want, okay? And also remember, deleting something manually in the outliner is going to delete the deformation, all right? Deleting it by history is going to delete it in the outliner, but it will not delete the deformation. It just deletes the history so that you can get back into moving things around. Also, it deletes the inputs in here as well. All right, well, that'll do it. Today, again, recapping, we added multiple nonlinear deformers to an object, showed you how that relates to the input connections here, and also how to delete by history and move this guy around as well. Oh, also, let me just show you real quick. Let's go back to these three guys. If you want to go back, though, once you've got these here and you've taken a look at this or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can click on these guys and change them till you're blue in the face. Right? You can always do that, which I always recommend uh, instead of deleting history and adding more deformers. All right, that'll do it. Have a beautiful day.